this video, we are going to be enchanting our gear, building the bee sanctuary, and doing a little bit of interior work. I, I just broke that azalea bush. Home, sweet home. In our last episode, we went on a quartz mining session, and we got plenty of quartz and a bit of XP. We did not end up on 28 levels, as I am now. Those 28 levels came from a different place, which I'm going to show you pretty soon. But before we get into that, you might notice the distinct lack of obsidian I have. You see, for my plan... I'm going to need 20 obsidian to build two nether portals. One into my XP grinder and one to get to it. Because it is a long walk. I have to go all the way back to my original house. I guess it's time to do some mining. But before we get into that, there's been somebody going around YouTube with my name. And they've been getting more subscribers than me. So help us pass him and let's thwart his evil plans. And on the topic of getting distracted, with my silk touch pickaxe, I can get these crystals. That could be pretty cool for interior design. I don't know. Okay, I wish I caught that on camera. I just fell down here and I hit an MLG water bucket from all the way up there. You guys just gotta believe me, okay? And that is, if I'm not mistaken, an iron vein. This is all the iron I'm ever gonna need. Alright, great, we're done getting iron for the rest of the season. But of course, I don't have a fortune 3 pickaxe, so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this. But yes, it does go on, there's, there's more tough around here, right? It, it, it doesn't just end right there. Yeah, there's another iron. And I think this is part of the same vein, or it might be in a completely new one. Yeah, there's just more iron here. That's cool. I I'm just gonna get some of the exposed one, because I'm, I'm hurting on iron a little bit. Here's another amethyst cluster. What is going on? Here's our portal. As you might be able to hear, some zombies. This is an effective way to get exposed. And I've run out of swords. And now we have our portal in the nether. But something unprecedented happened. It actually got put in the right place by itself. I gathered all this obsidian, and I guess I'm just gonna keep it now. Yeah, I should probably just take out this little stuff. Oh, come on, now my shovel's broke too? We can easily just get from that, which is a portal. I just have kind of like a maze going to it so that mobs can't easily get me, and over here we just got a little space for me to be. And then run over to here, our secret base that's not that secret. And also, the doors are locked. That's, that's great. That's just great. I, I, I should probably just leave one open. But if we come through here, then we are back at our zombie farm. And I might do like a highway here or something, but not that big of a priority. And I need some quartz up there. I think it's just because it's, you know, like right over a gigantic pit of lava. I, I thought we just like went to a random cave for some reason, but no. The, this is where I put the portal. You might have also noticed I found three deep slate diamond doors down there. That's pretty cool. So I saw protection 4 on the iron pants, so I'm gonna try it on the diamond pants. Let's hope for like unbreaking 3. Yeah! Alright, those are great pants. So the bow is saying infinity right now, and nothing else really has anything really good, like the boots are just like unbreaking 3. The only other tempting one is fortune 2, which would be nice, but I kind of want to wait for fortune 3. I'm just gonna probably get the bow enchantment, because... Like, infinity's a great one to have. And because I'm such a genius, I'm gonna put some soul portions along this path so that piglins won't actually try and attack me if I forget to wear golden boots. And now I won't have to wear golden boots either. Oh, come on, it's just infinity. I shouldn't have taken it. The enchanting session went decently. So, it, it was a little weird. Like, of course, I got the nice pants, but nothing else that I could enchant had anything good on it. Like, it was always Unbreaking or Aqua Affinity or whatever. Fire Protection 3. Like, seriously, I wouldn't take Fire Protection 4, and now you're asking for 3? But I did get Fortune 3 on an Iron Pickaxe. For some reason, the Diamond Pickaxe had Fortune 2, but this had Fortune 3. So now, I guess it's time to just break down all my ores and just see how much we get. Okay, I got a decent amount of stuff, like plenty of iron, plenty of gold. The diamonds were slightly worse than average. We got 17 instead of the 18, which was the average, but I'm not complaining. And I think we should probably celebrate by making a diamond hat and a couple of tools. And now this is how we're looking. Check it out. But now I want to go and enchant these things. This is... This is a bit of a problem. I have enchanted my helmet with Protection 3 and Aqua Affinity. It said Aqua Affinity and... I think Protection 3 is a good thing to get beside that. I've decided to hold the phone because this has Fortune 3 on it, so I'm gonna just wait 
I'm just gonna just wait. So maybe I'll get to level 30, craft another diamond pickaxe, and get fortune 3 on it. So I'm thinking maybe the bee sanctuary should go over here. Like, we could have a bee nest on top of these water sources. I've grinded up some resources. The diamond axe definitely helps, and I think I want to make it now. Alright, it's coming along pretty nicely. I'm kind of designing this on the fly here, and I think it's going alright. I want to add a dome to the top and just have it a little more curvy shapes because it looks a little weird just like a box but if we come in here we have some flowers on this side and some crops over here and we have these little things we have shears in them so we can just dispense that and then when there's bee nests under here and they have full honey it'll shear them i don't know if they'll actually get caught behind here because they're facing this way but they might just like spot out this way or we can just go behind there if needs be. So for some reason from here, it looks a little weird. Now, I can think of like a couple reasons. Number one, it's not tall enough. We're gonna be building this higher up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But number two, there's kind of nothing in between these. And I will add a road in the future. I'm thinking making it deep slate kind of based. And, you know, I've got a lot of deep slate, so that would be pretty easy. Most of it is in regular deep slate form though, so I might need to just like go mining with a different pickaxe. I have a couple stacks of cobbled deep slate, but unless something goes horribly wrong, the next time I see you, this should have a nice lovely dome on it. Check it out guys, it is done. The bee sanctuary is complete. And I think it looks really cool. We've got like some light gray stained glass at the bottom, and I didn't want it to just be boring with all light gray stained glass, so I put some light blue at the top. It kind of is like the sky color. I think that makes sense. But on the front, I did something really weird. Normally, I would just like have logs going across and up. But this time, I decided to do like a diagonal log thing. And I think it just looks better when you have the spruce things here. And I didn't want to do it for the middle because then it would be asymmetrical. And that didn't end up looking very good. But you can just see the bees hard at work in there. Going into their bee nests. And yeah, I did the back. Don't, don't worry about any left a moss block here. So, one of the things about this, though, is that if we come up here, you can actually see these are glass panes. I don't believe this is big enough to fit a baby bee through it. Their hitboxes are, like, at least half a block, and this is not half a block. So, the only problem is that, like, it's a gap, and it doesn't look super great if you're looking at it from the top. But we don't have an elytra yet, so I just... That was embarrassing. As I was saying, we don't have an elytra yet, so we can't actually see it. But we could add, like, some slabs or trapdoors there if we wanted to. I don't think it looks that bad, though. But I definitely want it to be kind of in line with this glass. And yeah, I don't think it looks that bad. And if we go inside, you can see all of the bees coming out. They go to the other side, and once they actually go back, they're gonna have some pollen, which means that they grow the crops faster. And I'm just using rose bushes to breed them, because it's essentially just one bone meal per rose bush. I could use other flowers, like if I make a flower farm, then it would be better value to use others, but they're easy to make. And so I can just breed all these bees up. Of course, we're not gonna have like too many bees. We can only have a maximum of 24 because these bee nests can only hold three bees each, but the place just gets wild. And then we can come on over here and you can see we've got some shears in there. We can just cook this. It'll shear all of those. And it's just so satisfying. Now you might be wondering, why didn't you just put a redstone line on top? Like, that would be so easy. Well, I think it's kind of fun to just, like, go around and just shear the ones that you need to shear. Yeah, you can see they're bringing the pollen, and they're growing the crops. It's really cool. So, I could, like, put carrots or potatoes here if I wanted to. In fact, I probably will put carrots and potatoes, like, in the middle. Because that's where most of the bees are going anyways. So, you might be able to see kind of, like, a gradient of, like... There's a lot of grown here, and then, like, these ones are less grown. For downstairs, I want to have some candles around the enchanter. So one of the ones I wanted to use is the yellow candle. I think that looks pretty cool. It kind of blends with this a little bit. I wasn't anticipating, so we can also use some orange candles. But I also want to use the regular candles around the place. Maybe on top of the azalea I could have a couple. Eh. I am a bit nitpicky about where the candles are. There, I think that's better. I don't have any more string. I just use it all on candles and also for the dispensers. I need three string per dispenser. The interior up here isn't very decorated to begin with. I've been doing a bit of work on the interior as of late, but before I show you that, this wandering trader here has two things that I would definitely want. The small drip leaf 
It's not so common to find, and also, on its own, it's a cool decoration, but you can just bone meal it to get big drip leaf, and then I can do that to get infinite big drip leaf, which is an absolute win. But also, the pointed dripstone. I never have a problem getting dripstone, but in this world, for some reason, there's just no dripstone. The only problem is, I do not have any emeralds, so I can't really buy those right now. So I'm gonna have to wait till I get more villagers, but as you can see, I've been doing a little interior work, like I said. And we have a couple of cool things here. First of all, the receptacle of rubbish, also known as the trash can. It's a pretty simple design, you just put a trapdoor on top of a composter and then boom, you get a trash can. And then, you know, a crafting table, and you always want a crafting table near your storage system. This is very important. So I can just go like, oh, I need to do this, and then just craft, blah, blah, blah. So this is meant to be kind of like a kitchen area. It could change up the floor design a bit, like maybe have some tiles or something more stone-based. But I kind of have like this amethyst cluster. It's meant to be kind of like a salt lamp. And then we have a sink, and then some logs as well as a smoker. And we have a stone cutter being held up, a grindstone, some fern eye. And then I did a four candle thing here. I usually only have like up to three candles. I usually do two to three candles, but every so often I want to have like one or four because diversity. And then just like a plate. And we have this kind of vent here for the blast furnace. And I think it looks pretty cool. And we have like pretty much all the survival blocks except for like the enchantment table. And I probably want to have the grindstone near the enchantment table. It doesn't really matter too much. I think this area turned out kind of nice. And on the topic of interior decorations, I think I'm going to three think these ones. Like maybe I could have them chained to the ceiling and maybe not have them be a block with a bunch of torches on them. Also, this is just super satisfying. So I was doing some iron mining in the vein for more change, and you're not going to believe this. I found more diamonds. And so I, I got to 30 levels because of the experience from the diamonds as well as some redstone I got. And so I think it's finally time. Let's see what we get. Fortune 3 and... Nothing. Just, just Fortune 3. But it's fine. Let, let's see. Okay, efficiency 4... Alright, I don't have any efficiency for, like, pickaxes, which is pretty sad, like, with my silk touch, I got unbreaking two, that's okay, and then fortune three, I got nothing else, but, you know, I, I would have needed to repair this pickaxe, but I think I'm just gonna use this as my mining pickaxe now, I, of course, I'll need to repair it a lot, but, yeah, I think we're good on that front. This shade's gonna be placed sideways, wouldn't it make sense that they could be crafted sideways as well? I don't know, tell me what you think in the comments, but now we can finally finish this out. I've been just like putting chains, which is replacing these fences with chains. I think this is probably the last layer I need to do. So if we put a chain there. I mean, maybe we'll do one more, but I don't know. I think that looks okay, but I have been doing a little bit of work in the bee sanctuary, and it is looking pretty cool so far. The lights no longer float. They're being hung up by chains, and you may notice. I picked up a pig. He just lives here now, with no explanation. But I just love how this looks now. I can change it up later if I want to, but I think that the fence connections are still okay. Like, if I had a debug stick, I would change that to just go straight up without that weird little connection, but I think it's okay. So I had enchanted my shovel earlier, but the audio got corrupted, so here we are now. I set on breaking three, and of course that's what I got. So, you know, I, I, I need some more patience. But anyway, I have started work on a road system connecting up this house to the bee sanctuary. So the road just kind of tags along. We've got these deep slate facing in the same direction as the road is going. And then other deep slate just facing up. And we just kind of mix that in. And they've got these little gutters on the side, as you'd see in a lot of medieval roads. I might mix in a couple like cobble deep slate or tiled deep slate things here, but I think just as pure bricks they look okay as well. But one thing that I ran out of is actually just deep slate itself. I have 18 left to my name, and so I'm gonna probably have to go on a diamond mining session where I use my silk touch pickaxe exclusively to get a lot more 
of this delicious deep slate. So I think that the road really brings these two builds together in a way that they weren't connected before. And I definitely want to use this kind of road, maybe a slightly different design, depending on which houses or which buildings they are linking. Once I extend it over here, not this way, I can just add buildings, like I can have a building right here, and they'll be in pretty intuitive places because they're just wherever the road would naturally lead to. So I think it's time to start mining for some diamonds, but mostly for regular deep slate. Let's hit it. diamonds but that's kind of to be expected but i did get two stacks of deep slate and some deep slate iron ore which i will be breaking down right now we got 42 iron so that's pretty cool we'll just cook that up in our new furnace smelter and i i just have a bunch of iron laying around i, I think i'm gonna make an anvil now and where to put it i mean i guess i may as well put it there before i find a place that doesn't look too bad does it the other wandering trader left. I didn't kill him, I swear. And this guy is not selling anything useful, like melon seeds might be cool to have for getting melons, but I still don't have emeralds, so it doesn't really matter anyways. But I do need to get this guy away from my house because, yeah, he's, he's gonna kind of bug me with his sounds. And now we're rowing boat with the wandering trader over some grass. Now that I have the deep slate, I've been working on the road a bit. And I think it looks pretty cool. So it extends over here, and it just goes this way. It's pretty much the same design, but there are a few ad additions I made. First of all, I added this little lamp thing. I want to have things overhanging in the shop area. Imagine like in a medieval town between the houses, you have these little lamps hanging from the ceiling, and then you just can see the sky only if you look right up. I think that's kind of a feel I would like to get from here. I also used a wooden button on here to kind of make it look like it was put into the build a little bit more. It's very supported with that beam as well. And then we also used stone buttons here because, I mean, I thought like, I'm using a button there. Why not try putting buttons here? And I think it looks pretty cool. It definitely adds a little bit of depth where it is lacking. I kind of want to add some extra depth in the middle. But I'm not really sure how to do that yet, like I'm, I'm thinking trapdoors or something, but nothing really seems that cool to me. But I think having the glass panes at least does help with the depth a little bit. So I've been experimenting with amethysts here, and they look okay, but I just thought, what would look way better? Leaves! How could I forget leaves? I haven't used leaves like at all in the entire world, which is crazy because I love using leaves. They're so nice for building. And so I'm going to collect some and use them, see how it looks, and I will show you guys once I am done. And here is our prize. We got a ton of oak leaves because I went to two oak trees that were the annoying trees, and I chopped them both down with the leaves first. Now I have plenty of leaves to cover up the greenhouse. So I will see you when this is done. And here it is, looking gorgeous. I may have gone a little bit overboard, but it's a good thing I got the amount of leaves that I got because I don't have very many left over. So any more leaves I'll need to use, I just a few here and there is fine, but I will need to get another gathering session done. But I did every side, don't worry. And I also did the roof, which I think is looking pretty cool. Of course, we won't be able to come up here very much until we get an elytra, but we kind of had some vines going across. And as you can imagine, it looks kind of cool from the interior as well. Oh my gosh. Why does that keep happening? And if we come over into the interior, you can see the leaves cascading over the build and going along with like the lantern singing from the ceiling. I think it looks really cool. Now having leaves in the interior is an option. I could just have some coming from the ceiling probably and that would potentially look cool. But I think for now, I'm gonna leave it where it is. I'm happy with this build and walking down the street is definitely a lot more interesting now. We got two 
super cool looking builds on a pretty nice looking street. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. And I will see you in the next episode. It wasn't quite 20 minutes, so this makes up for it. Please subscribe.